Hey, what's up guys? Chip Walters here again talking about SketchUp to Blender. And today I want to talk a little bit about how do we use background images to set up our scenes so that we can accurately create dimensioned drawings. So let's get started. This is a uh, this is a floor plan I got off of the internet. It's a pretty basic thing, but the thing I wanted to show you was that we have 40 feet and 26 foot 8 inches, and that's why I want to kind of set up my background image. We've got this image stored on my desktop, so we'll launch Blender, and let me just go ahead and delete a few things here, and now we'll uh, we'll get started. So the way I'm going to first the first thing I'm going to do is I want to import that image, and I'll just drag that image over here and drop it in here. Now nothing happened. To so what's going on? Well, if I look under this, this is the properties panel, the numeric properties panel. I can, I can toggle this on and off. And if I look in here, I'm in object mode and I've got this background images and I've got one right here and it says all views. So if you recall, as I rotate this with the middle mouse button, if I hold the alt key, you'll see that I can snap to an orthographic projection. But the problem with that is that we're still in perspective. So if I hit the five number, numcad key and do the same thing. Now I'm going to, I'm going to drag it again, snap in. And when I, when I snap to any projection, I'm going to have this image show up, right? So this is, we're at top right here. Let's go down here up oh, and now we're at front. So we can set this up to be whatever view we want. Of course we want it on top. So I'm going to go in here. And if you look at this, this, uh, axis, I want to say, let's set it up on top. So now that I've done that, now when I move it around, I could have a separate image on the side. And of course, when I'm in orthographic view, I don't see any image. So it only shows up when it's on top. So that's one way of looking at it. So another way of doing this is what if you want to see this image in all views, including the perspective view? The way we do that is we're going to create an empty and parent this image to it. And the way to do that is we'll hold the control key down, click on this image, and we're going to move it over into the scene. And there it is. Now we can center it. There's two different ways to center it. I can go over here and just type in, in the location zero 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 or the other way to do it would be to type in alt g and that centers it then of course we want to scale it so we hit the s button and we just drag it out to whatever we want but right now we really don't know what we want to scale it to so i'm going to do this i'm going to leave it right here and i'm going to come over here into the background images area and i'm going to take that floor plan and i'm going to just delete it so i don't have that so now i've got this so now I'm going to see this wherever I am, wherever I'm, whatever view I'm in, whether in perspective or not. Now let's say I want to make this a little transparent. So the way we'll do that is we'll go over with it selected. We'll go over to this little data object type, which is the picture, this floor plan. And I can go in here and I can just take this transparency slider and I can slide it back to whatever I want. Next, I want to scale this so that we're working at the correct scale. In order to do that, I'm going to go over to this scene tab and I want to make sure that we're set to Imperial and I'm going to use this separate units button and that's going to allow me to type in both feet and inches. Let's get started. We can go over to the create and I can put a plane in here. And if I look at the size of the plane right now, I'm going to set the dimensions of this plane to match the blueprint. So in the X dimension, I want 40 feet. So dimensions, I go over here and say 40 and use the feet and that's 40 feet. And then in Y, we want to go 26, 26 and eight inches. So Y will go 26 feet, eight shift inches like that. And that's actually our document. We say, well, now I can't see this. So what I can do is I can actually set a material up to make this somewhat transparent also. So I'll go over here, click on my material, add a new one. Let's scroll down and go to viewport. And we're going to grab that alpha down like this, about 0.400. So that's a new material. And then we'll go to the object and we're going to say transparency. And now we've set this to be transparent. If I want to adjust that, I can go down here again to this alpha and I can remove it. The other thing I can also do, of course, is I can just hit the Z key, which goes into wireframe, which actually is what I'm going to do here for now. So now I want to scale the image to match this orange rectangle on screen. I'll select the image. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and move to orthographic and go to the top, zoom out. I'm going to hit the T key, give myself a little more room. Now we hit the S key and we can scale up. Obviously the image is not centered. So once I do that, I'll go ahead and drag, I'll drag the image up a little bit. 
one way and then the other and see if I can get it. So again, hit the S key again. That's it. Let's put it directly on the center if I can. Now notice it's, it's kind of jerky. It's going in different increments and it's going to be kind of hard to get it exact. If I hold the shift key down now, I'm, I'm slowing down the scales so I can pretty much get it exact now. Now that I'm done, I can save my file. Now we want to try and draw edges very accurately. I'm going to hide this plane. I'm going to go and do Shift A and say Mesh, Single Vert, Add Single Vert. It puts a single vertice right there. If you don't have that in your menu, just go under your Preferences and under your Add-ons, look for Extra, type in Extra, and make sure you have this checked, Add Mesh Extra Objects, and then hit the Save User Settings. That'll make sure that you have that in that menu. So now I'll hit the G key. I'll move this over here. Now I know this first well, this first edge wants to go 40 feet exactly, so don't forget we have set this up for imperial units. I'll hit the E key, which is extrude. If you look down here, we have Y's vertical, X is horizontal, so I'll hit the X key to lock it. And then while it's in here, in this mode, I'm going to type in 40 feet and enter. So I'm going to zoom out because I know the next one's 26.8, and I want to show you how we can do this even a little easier. Hit the T key to open the, the uh, T panel over here. Okay. So what we want to do now is we want to extrude this vertice down 28, 26 feet, 8 inches. So I'll hit the E key and I'm going to lock it in the Y direction and I'll click anywhere. And then I'll go over here in this requester and I have one chance to do this. And I want to go minus 26 feet, minus 8 inches. And then I hit enter and it puts it exactly where we want it. Then it's a simple matter to hit the E key one more time, lock it in the X direction, and this time we want to go minus 40. Hit enter, and then we can basically just hit the A key, which is going to select everything, and hit the F button, F as in fill, and it's going to finish filling that. And if I basically go into the shaded mode by hitting Z, you'll see that we have this polygon, but it's actually flipped. So the way to, to unflip that is we'll go into the W key and we'll say flip, flip normals and now we have it correct. Just a quick note, there are a lot of the commands that I'm using can also be found under this menu here, the mesh menu. For instance, under faces, you will see flip normals. And don't forget, control F is a face menu, control E is the edges menu and control V is the vertices menu. So if I go over here and say control F, I get that same menu. Of course, now that we have the face selected, we can just hit the E key and we can move it up. And as we move it up, we can again do the same thing. Stop in, in the Z area right here. I can type in eight feet and we have an eight foot ceiling for there. So that's, that's how that works. Let's now talk a little bit about how we could construct some of these inner edges. First, I'm going to delete this face. Hit the X key and say delete only faces. I don't want to delete the edges, I just want to delete the face. Next, we can select edges. So I want to grab this one edge right here and I want to split this edge. And the way I'm going to do that, under tools, I'll click subdivide and now if I go back to vertices, vertices you see I've got one vertice. Now I'm going to drag this vertice over here, like let's put it right there. And I want to go to the top view which is the 7 key, and we're going to use our extrude tool again, and this time I'm going to eyeball it. I'll hit the E, Y, and click, and now I want to actually snap it to this line over here. So how do we do that? So Control shift tab enters in our snap element, and I can set whatever I want. In this case, I'm going to say Edge, and then if I hit E now, now I don't have my magnet on, so it's not going to drag anything, but if I hold the Control key down, my control key will work will work well, right? So let's hit the X key and the control key, and now we've snapped it to that line. So that's an interesting thing that I wanted you guys to see. So let's take a look at another example. Notice I'm in the right ortho view. I'm going to drag this image of a chair in. I'm going to leave it like this. Then I'm going to shift A and add a single vert. Now I'm in edit mode, so I'm going to hit the G key. And I'm going to put it, uh, let's put it right up here. Okay, now this time, I'm not going to measure distances. I'm just going to create a freeform display where I'm connecting vertices to edges. So let's show you how this works. All I need to do is hold the control key down and just click 
and everywhere I click with the control key down, I right click, by the way, I'm not left clicking, I'm right clicking because my mouse is set to swap the right and left buttons. So once I have three of them, I can hit the A key. I select all these, hit the F, and I've got a face. Now remember we have this magnet set, and if you remember also, we have edge set here on our snap mode. So now I'm gonna go ahead, once this is done, I will hit the A key, and I'll select one vertice, and I'll hit the Y key, which actually separates that vertice from that polygon which means I'm going to leave the polygon there and that vertice is going to stay there and I'm going to hit the G key and I'm just going to move that one down. So I'll move it down to here. Let's move this right on that edge. And then I'll control right click here and control right click here and control right click here and then just hit the G key and move this right there. Now I want to select all three of these. So I'll, I'll hit the A key. And if I hit the A, I've got everything selected, which isn't really good. So what I want to do is I'm gonna go control tab and go to my edge mode and I'm gonna select one edge and if I hold the L key over this it's gonna select all the connected and once that's done then all I need to do is then hit the F key again to create the face but notice the face doesn't show up right so what I'll do is I'll hit the control F key we talked about four flip normals and it's there so let's do this another time so we can make sure we understand it let's deselect everything make sure we're in vertex mode select a vertex Hit the Y key, G key to move it. We'll set it down, let's set it right here. And then we can just control right click, control right click, control right click. So to select all these vertices, I can hold the control key down with the right mouse button and I can select them like this. And when I do that, that gives me a lasso and that lasso I can just select the vertices and I get F and there we have it. So you're starting to see there's a bunch of different ways that we can do these things. L will select everything under it. If I go here into, into let's go into face mode. And if I hit the L key here, it's going to select that face. L. So just keep selecting them as you tap in the L key. Let's finish this real quick. If you recall, we didn't scale this background image when we brought it in. So we really don't have a scale for this set of objects. So let's do that now. In edit mode, we'll select a vertex. We'll hit the Y key to copy it, G key to move it. We'll move it over here. Then I'm going to hit the E key and drag it, type in the Y key to configure it and click. And now we know it's 26.5 inches so I'll go here in this Y and I'm gonna say 26.5 inches and I've drawn a little line that shows me that's 26.5 inches now I'm gonna go into my edge mode I'm gonna select that line and I'm gonna hit the P key and I want to separate that selection and when I do that it makes a new selection up and above so if I go tab I have this object and now I have this object I have two different objects so let's go into my background and let's hide the background images. Let's select this object and we want to scale it so that it fits in between this. So I'll hit the S key and I'll move it here and I'll hit the G key and move it down. And let's go ahead and hit the home key to see everything. And let's again hit the S key. What we did just then is we scaled the object and you can see in here that our object scale has a bunch of different numbers in it. And the problem with that is that as we talked about in the previous session is that now everything that we do inside that object when we edit mode will be scaled also by those same amounts. What we want to do is we want to fix that. And what we can do there to fix that is we use control A and we're going to apply our scale. And when we did that, now look over here, it looks right. We can also go into object and say transform geometry to origin. And we've put it back up in the origin area. Let's take this. We don't need this anymore. I'll delete it. And now we have our scaled chair. 
One last thing to show you. Here's our previous drawing. We have our edges selected. I'm going to tab into edit mode. Now that I'm in edit mode, I can tap the A key to toggle select all and select nothing. When I have them selected, I can go in here and under mesh display, I can say edge info and I can say length. And if we zoom up, you see this is 40 feet. Remember we said that was 40 feet. So it shows every length of every edge. This is 26.8. You can see it right there. So this is a good way to also view your 3D data to make sure everything is correct.